versus the Pico. First and foremost, I want to thank Joel. He is a member of the Auto Nerds. He had posted this on their forum and was asking for a little help deciphering the intake capture and the WPS captures that we will be getting to. Going by his notes, it's a 2012 Ram 5.7 Hemi with a P0505. I also know that he had written that it's a homemade sensor and on this particular capture, he had it hooked to the purge line on the intake. The capture is cranking. So what I like to do with these um, is I have an overlay here and you put the firing order in. This is 18436572. It is a ignition sink on number one. I like to uh, put a zero marker here and then lay off 720 degrees here. And if you open up the rulers tab here, you can add rulers uh, up to 90. I think you can go maybe to 72 for a 10 cylinder. But we know that a V8 fires every 90. Something happens every 90 degrees. So I like to look at that. The biggest thing that sticks out here, well, I guess what we need to talk about is this. Uh, everybody in your uncle knows that 5.7 Hemis have valve train issues. Um, I, I'm trying to overlook the fact that it is a Hemi. I'm looking at it. I'm looking at the waveform. It is what it is. Um, I usually don't work on Hemis. I'm a Nissan guy. Anybody who follows me uh, knows that I've worked on Nissans primarily, Nissan and Subaru uh, for over 25 years. So. Uh, this is a little out there for me as far as the manufacturer, but at the end of the day, uh, it's still an engine. It sucks, squeeze, bang, blow. It still has to move air in. It has to move air out. Um, so that's how I approach these things. It doesn't matter to me whether it's a freaking BMW or a Nissan or a Hemi. So after I lay out all my markers, I take just a quick look. I'm looking for things that are out of place. Well, the, the biggest thing that's out of place is this little guy right here. Uh, it's short, it's a low, but it's also not timed. See how everything's kind of in time here, here, and all the way across? Well, this guy's late. Uh, everything to the right of this marker's late. It's kind of like a bad technician or a bad employee, you know? I'm thinking, I'm, I'm thinking cam lobe lifter issue, loose valve. Um, a followers off a shim is has popped off the top of the bucket I'm thinking bad employee situation here you know late to work late opening early closing early leaving kind of a weird scenario but that's how I look at it uh, Joel was thankful uh, thankful enough to provide us with a known good on cylinder one I believe and of course he put the WPS in number five and we're gonna go over both of those i'm going to start with the known good but first this is late okay so i'm already thinking valve train issue i look across that's fairly even that one's even these guys are pretty even this guy dips a little low here and what i'm thinking here is um as we'll see number five is lower compression so i'm thinking the crank picked up a little extra speed and was able to pull a little lower on two um, like I said, the, the, the pulse sensor stuff is a little kind of gray area. Uh, there's some uh, black and white with the pulse sensors, but there's some gray area, in my opinion, uh, as far as what they're telling you and how they work. My first video, I had mentioned that the pull doesn't represent volume. It really represents the speed of change. So... If one skyrockets up, it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean there was a lot of pressure. It just means what happened happened quickly. Um, so I'm going to go ahead. I think uh, I guess this is about all I want to go over with this capture here. Uh, I'll leave it here just for a second in case anybody sees anything. I kind of see where. Well, I guess this low pull here coming in late. 
piston's already moving down, so maybe it didn't get the full effect. So I'm just thinking out loud here, folks, so bear with me. So I'm going to go ahead and move over. We're going to look at the number one. He provided a number one in cylinder, which is uh, deemed as known good. So uh, we'll move over to that and look at that next. All right, here's number one. Thanks again, Joel, for providing a known good. It's always good to check a known good on the engine. Um, you know, if you're dealing with a, you know, an engine you're not really familiar with. So if you got a problem on, say, five, you know, if you go to one or, you know, whatever's easiest. If you can get its companion cylinder, that's actually really good. Not always possible, but just something to try. So um, I've got it set up. The engine's idling. And uh, we've got about 83 pounds of pressure on the known good. Um, can't ask for anything better than that. I like to snap a, uh, I like to snap one at zero. I was looking at this capture earlier, and I don't know for a fact, but I believe he had the gr had a ground loop going on. Um, sometimes you connect your scope to battery ground, and then, which is nothing wrong with that, and then the WPS hose is ground to the block. And then there's a difference, there's a voltage difference between the two, and a lot of times that'll show up in these pressure waves. So, something to keep in mind if you start getting a little bit weird numbers. I think this is a little bit weird. There's about 1.2 psi difference, and remember it's just translating voltage to pressure. So, and the vacuum here is 11.89. So, if you roughly, if you double it, this measures in PSI. My brain works in inches of mercury. So if I double that, you know, I'm looking at, you know, 22, 23, and that seems a lot. I mean, I live down here near the beach. Um, I'm 300 foot above sea level, and we don't really get vacuum poles that much. So something just to keep in mind, uh, a little off subject, but uh, good to point out. But for what we're looking at, uh, that, that little anomaly is uh, really... Uh, null and void so the other thing i like to do is uh once i check my vacuum i like to make sure that my uh you know my exhaust pole here or my decompression pocket is you know within a couple of pounds of the vacuum uh, that that's an indication of a leak i'm going to set that at 720 i'm going to roll this dude bad dude over to zero I once again used the rulers. I brought out four this time. Um, something that does stick out to me, and, and it's it's because I'm not familiar with the product, but it seems like to me this whole exhaust decompression stroke happens really early. Uh, it, and from the research I've done, it, it seems to be normal. It's the way the cam's ground. Uh, so just because it looks bad doesn't mean it is bad. So that's why we always go to known good. Uh, the pocket looks good. It's nice and crisp. Um, the beauty of Pico is we can zoom right on in. You know, it has kind of a definite up. I like that. Back out of the back out. It looks like the valve overlap area happens pretty much right on top dead center. It may have pulled just a little early. Uh, something else to consider. You know, the engine does change speeds. Uh, these rulers are static. The engine does change speeds through its four strokes. Uh, the only way to really get, you know, to figure that would be to have the cam sensor in here, or the crank sensor, sorry. But for all intents and purposes, it, it, it looks good. Uh, the towers aren't leaning, meaning this side from here to here looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. So I would deem this as known good. Um, I always like to look at them, especially when people send me captures and say they know good. Uh, just, you know, if you're going to call it known good, I like to at least know it's known good. So no disrespect to anybody taking the captures. It's just, uh, you know, if I'm going to use it to rely on, then if I see any anomalies, you know, any cuts or, um, you know, bad things in the pockets or leaning towers, and it's called known good, I may question it a little bit. So uh, let's, uh, I'm going to go ahead and move into number five. This is number one. 
known good. We're moving into number five, the problem. Here's the ghost of honor. This is cylinder number five. First thing I do, just like with all captures, is I like to check peak compression. And that bad dude's about 55, so it's about 30 light of our known good. I'll roll it back up. I'll snap a cursor down to zero. I'll pull one down into here. Now there's a couple of dead giveaways with this capture. One is this nose here. And two is this bow right here. So remember in our first look or our pulse sensor capture, remember the pull started late. Um, and I referenced it to a bad employee coming in late, leaving early. Well, this is what our valve's doing. It's opening late, closing early. So let's look at it. We'll, couple, we'll snap a couple of cursors out. Uh, let's put them out. Pull this down, make sure we're somewhat on the center. There we go. So our piston's coming up here on 360. If it's coming up on two closed valves, it's going to be, it's going to make pressure. So if our intake valve is opening late, which means it would be closed here, we made a little bit of pressure here. It made a nose. Our known good didn't have that nose. Our piezo sensor said it's opening late. So right there, we have some great evidence of what's happening. Then you roll down here. We know that the piston's on bottom dead center at 540. Well, we know intake vacuum is in here. Well, while all of a sudden, did we pull more vacuum right in here? Well, there's our bad employee or our early closing valve. Employee leaves early, valve closes early. Piston's still going down. You're going to pull some more vacuum right in here. So between the first look sensor telling us we have a valve late, we have a known good, which kind of explains some of this stuff here, which, you know, someone who doesn't work on these cars all the time or this style engine, this looks odd, but I'm going to overlook that. And then we get into here. My God, you've got all the evidence you need to at least post your customer to at least get a valve cover off. Uh, now we know that this, I, I know that this car has lifter issues and the cam was wore out and I'm going to put some pictures at the end of this, which some of you guys may have seen this a thousand times, but let's say for instance, this was not a Hemi. Let's say this was a, an older Subaru that had the shim, the adjustment shims on top of the buckets. And this dude had some you know some big exhaust on it and you could tell the dude's been out rally racing let's say he over revs it and it spits a bucket out or it spits a shim off the top of the bucket you're going to have a lash issue you can apply this same thought process to that let's say you have a really loose valve you're going to get the same deal if you have a loose valve you have a valve that's going to open late and is going to close early essentially what this motor is doing although this motor has got damage causing it. Um, so I want to say thanks again for to Joel from Auto Nerds. I'm also an Auto Nerds member. Um, I was helping him out with some of these captures, explaining basically what I've talked about here. Uh, I thought it would be a good idea to put on the channel. Um, and I direct messaged him and he said, sure. I explained to him I wanted to use it for educational purposes, and he said, by all means, because uh, he's here to learn too. So, Joel, if you're watching, thank you very much. You guys that are starting to subscribe and watch my stuff, thank you. If you like what you're seeing, uh, tell somebody else. If you don't like what you're seeing, tell me. Uh, that's that's kind of the way business is. Uh, I am still on Instagram. Carter's Diagnostics. I'm still going to use Instagram, but I'm going to use these more in-depth case studies on the YouTube platform. And if anybody needs to reach out, uh, want to go over a capture that you have, 
uh, you think it'd be good for the community, uh, let me know. DM me through Instagram or post a comment here on YouTube. I'm always looking to try to help the best I can and always looking to learn something. So you guys uh, appreciate you tuning in this far. You guys uh, keep those scopes, blow the dust off scope, get that dude out. It's going to save your life one day. Have a good one.